Greetings, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. Today, we're going to be discussing connecting your high flex and hybrid learning in higher education. But before we get into that, just a few items of housekeeping. First of all, this webinar is being recorded and will be available for on-demand viewing. Once it's ready, it usually takes us about a week or so to get it edited, but once it's ready, it will be available to view at sure.com slash webinars. Once again, that is sure.com slash webinars. And that is a great site to see not only all of our past webinars across a wide variety of audio topics, but also to see all of our upcoming webinar sessions and register for those. So once again, that's sure.com slash webinars. And the second of all, as we go through the session today, if you have any questions, please feel free to type those into the Q&A section, and we will answer as many of those as we can at the end of the session. So let's take a dive in today. Um, looking at our agenda, we're going to start with the welcome and introduction. I guess that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> then we're going to be discussing what is hybrid and high flex learning. We're going to talk about connecting the classroom, talk about some learning opportunities, and then we'll dive into that Q&A, like I said. And who's going to be taking us through all this exciting information? Well, two of our fantastic associates here. We've got Ryan Budvitas and Justin Astorino, and they are going to be taking us through all of this great information. So without further ado, take it away, gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. And uh, great to see all of you, not see all of you, but uh, great to be here. Uh, and yeah, welcome, welcome. Yes, yes. So to get this thing started, uh, what is hybrid and high flex learning uh, is the question we are going to tackle today. Uh, next slide. Yeah, and uh, first thing we really wanna talk about is kind of how is learning delivered? So there are, are four ways that learning is delivered, there is in-person, remote, hybrid, and high flex. And what are these? Um, obviously, the majority of us are, are very, very, very well-versed in the in-person learning where we all show up to the classroom um, every single day, and uh, that is how we do our learning. There is the fully remote, which we're also pretty well-versed in, in terms of just everything is on a computer and it doesn't matter where you are you can be going to a school you know three states away across the world um, and still be learning that way there is hybrid where there is a mix of in-person and remote learning and then high flex which is very similar to hybrid but it is just you you're given that chance almost on, on a daily basis like are you going to be in class today are you going to be remote and having that meeting equity be the same regardless of which route you are taking. So that is, you know, how learning is delivered today. And the benefits of distance learning, it reduces cost of tuition. Um, that means, you know, less students are, are actually on premises. There needs to be housing, all of that type of stuff that kind of goes in with that. Um, students are from varied locations. Um, you can record everything, so you can have that for review, as well as reuse. Um, extend accessibility. Um, you have larger class session sizes, more flexible schedules, and you actually do have higher enrollment rates we have seen. And it looks like we have our first poll question, which is gonna get us into what we're doing next year. So definitely take your time to uh, answer this question here. Most important element to, to create your high flex or hybrid classroom. Is it video? Is it audio? Is it scalability? Is it reliability? It should be a fifth one, all of the above. This is definitely a trick question. Yeah. <laughs> no. Each of these are in many ways equally important, but they come up in different ways. Get those votes in here. Looks like we're at about 40%. All right, I think we've got enough answers. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and show those results. Okay, yeah, exactly what we were thinking, right? So yeah, audio, but audio reliability, right? Uh, yes. Video came up as 3%. Uh, obviously, you can have the best 4K picture in the world. Um, may feel like you're in the classroom, uh, at least viewing it, but that's just surveillance if the audio is terrible. So uh, we were expecting that to pull lowly, um, lowly <laughs> lower. Um, and reliability, of course, is, is uh, overwhelming here. Um, 
and I don't blame you. So perfect segue into what makes audio amazing to begin with. Um, we have four categories here. Uh, I'm sure you could add in more, but these are the you know, kind of four we found. First of all, intuitive uh, for IT specifically. So this needs to be something that is intuitive to both configure initially and manage over time. Um, we need, we've also noticed that it needs to be an easy system to learn for your end users in particular. Um, just from personal experience, professors, instructors, TAs aren't the most tech savvy. <laughs> we've seen that something always goes wrong. Uh, it'd be nice if there was no training involved there. Um, also reliability, which was something that came up uh, at 64%, overwhelming. Uh, this is, uh, you know, it's all fine and dandy if you have an intuitive system that's easy to learn, but uh, if it's only good for a semester, that's not going to be very helpful, is it? And then lastly, I know it didn't pull well, but uh, this is something we've seen as a scalability factor. Uh, every classroom is different. Every classroom is different, even on the same floor, in the same building, on the same campus. You find different uh, shapes and sizes. So uh, not having a cookie cutter approach, in other words, having something that's a bit more modular, uh, scalable, is uh, something we found to be hugely important. Yeah. But there are some challenges. So what are these challenges? Yeah, we're looking at acoustics, uh, placement, and we'll go into these, of course, in more detail, room capacity and clarity. Uh, and then we're going to cover some post-pandemic situations, which are uh, increasingly popping up, right? Yeah. So, yeah, let's jump into acoustics. Um, go ahead. Yeah, so acoustics. So it is pretty much here, as you're seeing, you know, capturing the spoken word at a distance is always challenging um, if your room has poor acoustics. And we've all experienced that when you walk into a space and you can almost hear yourself in the room. And that is only magnified when you're using video conferencing and, you know, array microphones and things of that nature. So really tackling the acoustics as well as using the proper microphones um, and the proper configuration is of the utmost importance. So there's definitely ways that we can tackle the acoustics with adding acoustic paneling, um, you know, kind of changing the overall design of the space, but sometimes we can't. And in that scenario, we really have to lean on what products are we using that have high intelligent, you know, DSP working in the background that are dealing with things like the reverb and things of that nature um, in order to make everyone in that room sound great to the remote participants and every one of the people in the classroom um, be able to hear those remote participants great as well. And next up is placement. Um, we found that having the flexibility, uh, especially in classrooms, of not only surface mount, but wall mount and ceiling mount, uh, that flexibility between choosing and mixing and matching uh, has been super important for classrooms in general. Um, sometimes there's projector screens that are blocking the entire front wall or whiteboards. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, with surface mount uh, students uh, walking around the room, you don't always want that uh, in the center of the room, uh, bopping into the devices or, or spills or anything else. Uh, so having that flexibility uh, in a system has been key for, uh, for a lot of uh, folks. And the room capacity is always something to take into account. And really, it, it kind of comes down to how big is the space that we're, we're trying to outfit with, with video conferencing? Um, is it a forum? style where there's just one single, uh, the teachers up front presenting from a gooseneck microphone, or are we trying to pick up the audience as well? You know, again, how big is that space? And it also clues into things like acoustics and, and placement, everything kind of comes in um, into to focus here in terms of like, how big is the room? How many people are trying to fill up this space, et cetera, et cetera. So this is always a challenge as well as a top consideration. And then finally, we have clarity. Um, again, it's paramount that students feel like they're in the classroom if they do choose to uh, to be remote, or or it's not a choice at all, right? It's for some students uh, who are from across the country or whatnot, uh, you're paying money to to basically sit in the classroom remotely. So if, if you can't hear what the professor, especially, but other students are asking questions about, um, that can really distract you uh, from the core material here. Uh, that we found. So the, the, the speech intelligibility we're talking about here has all to do with clarity of voice and, uh, and good audio is, is essential for that. And some post-pandemic requirements. So this is uh, interesting. We actually made this uh, a whole webinar deck prior to the last couple weeks of, of things changing in this arena where this is no longer a global emergency, but the COVID-19 pandemic changed 
everything forever, um, but especially education where, you know, social distancing, um, that flexibility to shift to remote, um, as well as kind of quarantine accommodations, um, all this is, is, is not going to go away in terms of how education is delivered. So this, everything that's happened to all of us in the last few years um, in terms of education is not going anywhere and those considerations for if this ever happens again, to just be able to just automatically go into what we know works um, and to just, the big thing is just that flexibility aspect of it is, is while there may not, we may not have this global emergency anymore, that flexibility is here to stay of, of allowing students to choose which way they want to participate. So this isn't going anywhere. And uh, with, as far as sure is concerned, uh, based on your requirements, uh, we do have kind of two approaches, if you will, uh, more of a straightforward STEM ecosystem approach, which is what I would call, probably call DIY, and that's what we're here to focus on today. Um, but, you know, as any of us will tell you, 100% of rooms, sure guys, you covered, right? Um, and so, again, we just want to focus more on the, on the straightforward. Solution. Yeah, and just, to, and just to add into that, you know, like, what, what Justin just mentioned, within our conferencing portfolio and the two product lines, we really can cover anything from, you know, simple, straightforward, all the way to the most complex, complicated, multiple things happening and all that stuff, um, which if you do have some questions about, you know, Microflex Advanced, we would be more than happy to answer those at a, a, another time. But today we are going to be focusing on the STEM ecosystem and that how that's been a, a huge benefit to schools who have chosen to go with, with, with that product line. So. Mm -hmm. Time for All another right. poll. Looks, looks like we have another poll. Let's launch this what? next one. So what is your biggest challenge when looking for equipment? I've seen all of those come yes. up. Cost, availability, ease of installation, flexibility. Tricky, tricky. Mm -hmm. Votes are slowly coming in. Just take a moment, everybody, to select which one of those is the biggest challenge for you. Well, it's a tough decision. <laughs> All challenge. <laughs> all right, I think we've got about as many as we're going to get here. So let me just close this poll and show the results. Okay. Um, yeah, um, kind of what we we're expecting. These are all challenges. Availability certainly at some points has been a huge problem. Yeah, which um, is getting better. It's getting better. Yeah. Um, for us, certainly with STEM, you know. We're fully in stock, so that's good. Uh, cost can be a huge factor based not just on, on the number of rooms you can get to, but how much equipment goes into each room, right? Uh, ease of install comes up a lot, although that didn't pull highly, and flexibility. Yep, that's what we're talking about here today, high flex, so it's a kind of flexibility. But. All right, classroom integrations. Let's take a look. So some essential elements to every classroom, or not every classroom, but ones that you'll find it pop up again and again. Number one, you need video conferencing software, right? Something that works seamlessly with that, uh, or all of them, right? Some days you may have a, a Zoom meeting, some days a team meeting, uh, kind of depends on the organization. Um, you need to probably connect them to existing hardware of some kind, be it ceiling speakers that are third party or uh, some kind of PC or compute, maybe a digital whiteboard or displays, projectors, you name it. This all, all there pre-existing needs to tie into that. Um, integrations with learning management software, that's a given. Um, and then what kind of additional features may be present in the room, be it screen sharing, uh, annotations, recording, uh, all these things come up again and again. So, definitely essential to uh, to the solution. Yeah, and then adding interaction, um, you know, that ability to kind of have a, a, an interactive touchscreen display is huge in a lot of instances in education, but again, it is not needed. You know, a lot of this stuff really depends on, you know, what is the budget that you're working with and, and whatnot, but the beauty of whether if it's a, a large interactive display and or just a regular, you know, uh, a PC that's in the room that the, the teacher is using from their desk and or a bring your own device system. It doesn't really matter. Um, 
audio should be able to connect to regardless of what that is. So, um, but this is absolutely something that can be added into the room that will have no hiccups in terms of audio performance or anything like that. Um, and then we talked about this, uh, well, we've talked about it many times now, but scaling your audio, right? You can see throughout these different, <laughs> four different photos, these four different classrooms, uh, like I said earlier, they're all different shapes and sizes. Um, and so with that, having a solution that is scalable, modular, um, maybe you start with a single wall unit in those two smaller classrooms, um, and based on budget, based on need, um, for those maybe heavier used rooms, you could add in a second or even a third wall unit. Um, that would be uh, super helpful, right, when designing these rooms um, and, and then kind of uh, making sure and executing that these are you know, to standard. So absolutely. Yeah. And then um, this doesn't come up all the time, but we've seen it again and again where um, let's say you have a certain number of rooms that need to be outfitted, either due to you know distance, uh, to social distancing, or what have you in person. Maybe that number changes over time. Wouldn't it be nice if you could repurpose uh, maybe those wall units or those ceiling units uh, into those classrooms you need uh, more of, right? Um, in other words, you can kind of cannibalize uh, a wall unit you have in a, in a classroom you don't need anymore and place it in a room that maybe needs more robust audio uh, because it's seeing more use. Um, and so that ability, not starting from scratch exactly, is, is uh, super flexible for, for IT here. Yeah, and the mobilization of equipment. So to take into account, you know, cost was a big factor, um, really is, is not every single time is someone going to have the budget to outfit all of the classrooms that's needed. And so it's how do we get the best bang for the buck in terms of being able to have high quality video conferencing um, in as many place, spaces as possible, but still keep the cost really low. And that would be to build out a handful of mobile carts. This mobile cart here has got all the bells and whistles, as you see multiple cameras, dual display, um, as well as the microphone. And then underneath that, you have the different, you know, the PCs and the other, other products as well within that rack. Uh, but you can really, really sparse this down to where it's just the PC, a single camera, a single wall unit, um, and just one display, and all of that being able to just you move it around to whatever classroom that is needed for that day, um, and you have high quality video conferencing to be able to do that high flex hybrid learning. Yeah. All right, moving on to design. Uh, this is something that comes up again and again. That's this is another huge pain point uh, for IT when it, you know designing your spaces, right? Um, let's take a look. So here you can see a very basic, uh, a single stem wall unit. So that's you know, microphones and speaker, um, connected to a computer, which is either, you know, mini PC or the professor's laptop, it doesn't matter. Um, and then you'll see PoE power, uh, you'll see the displays there as a, uh, uh, as a video output there for the uh, PC, and then a camera, which is, of course, the video input. So all this together, very, very bare bones, as basic as it can get for a room this size, uh, but super feasible right now. Absolutely. And as we add more devices, that's really the only thing that's happening, um, is we are just adding more devices. As you see, the new wall units added into this are just going back to that switch for power and communication. These are networkable devices. They all find each other on the network. And something to take note of is in a recent update, um, there's no longer need for a DHCP server. Everything can find each other via link local. So again, you're just plugging in these devices and they're going to find each other. Um, but as you see, there's also one other thing added in here. Um, a, somewhat by the computer, you see that our hub device is now within the mix. When you have more than one audio device, then the hub became, becomes kind of the brains of the operation. And it becomes the device that's connected to the computer via USB. So it, be, it aggregates all of the audio information and it passes that over to the computer. So again though, from it being just one device or three, um, you're still having that same USB connection. So again, whether it's one or multiple, it's still one giant USB peripheral, which is so, so incredible for someone who does not really know necessarily, you know, they're not audiophiles, they don't have all this technical knowledge. Um, it doesn't really matter to them. It is using their headset, you know, it's choosing that on Zoom or Teams 
and regardless of the size of the, uh, the solution, how many devices are in the room, it's still that same. I'm just choosing STEM as my microphone and speaker. Or uh, a movie day, a professor wants yes. to show a YouTube clip or anything like that, it'll use our speakers for that. So yeah. you can see the flexibility, whether it's a software platform for video conferencing or anything else that computer's doing where that uh, speaker output might run yep. All right, we have a couple more uh, slides with different combinations and um, mixes and matches, if you will. Uh, here you can see two wall units at the front of the room uh, and two ceilings at the back to cover uh, additional um, kind of students maybe congregating back there. So. You have uh, another option here, again, as, as uh, Ryan was mentioning, uh, it's still that one USB connection to the computer, and uh, you can leverage all these devices through the network. Um, very, very cool. And we'll see one more option here, um, just four ceilings. Right? Yeah, and so this has got four ceilings as well as four of our STEM speaker um, involved in this space. Obviously, you know, these rooms, it's using the same design, but this could cover a fairly large classroom. Um, and there is something to take note here is, while well, yes, all of the connections are exactly the same, you still have that one USB, we are approaching the device limit um, of one single hub. Um, so this is, we have a, a 10 device limit, so this being four microphones and four speakers, it's eight audio devices, so that's just something to take note in terms of outfitting larger spaces with ceilings as well as speakers, is you might approach that device limit. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and turn it over. I just wanted to demo uh, something you guys can take full advantage of, um, and that is our online room design tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and show my screen when I'm ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to, again, our website here, uh, publicly available. Um, we can share the link with you if necessary. But um, let's say you have a, a pretty standard, I don't know, 30 by 30 classroom, um, not too large, not too small. Um, of course, you could go in here uh, as needed and add all kinds of desks, uh, typically without chairs all around, but um, whatever that may look like. We're, just for the sake of time, we're not gonna go through all this, but you can see how you can easily outfit the furniture in here and even add seating. Um, but for the sake of time, let's start dragging and dropping in our devices what maybe a single wall at the front looks like. Um, and you can see right away what that microphone coverage looks like. We mentioned on an earlier slide how acoustics may come into play into a room. Um, and so that's why we have the dark green and light green. Um, so the light green being kind of variable coverage based on uh, maybe how reverberant the room sounds. Um, and then, of course, dark green being guaranteed coverage. Yeah, and there is something to take note too. Like this is, we're very, very conservative with what the devices can pick up. Um, a lot of times, you know, in a 30 by 30, even one single wall unit could be more than enough. Uh, we have seen that time and time again. Yeah, this is certainly conservative for most classrooms, I would say. Um, and again, right as I add that second uh, wall unit, the hub automatically comes in, uh, making it easy for you to, uh, to kind of get this bill of materials going. This is a three wall uh, approach. Um, you know, I think before you delete that, yeah. we're taking a look at the microphone view, right, now, which is in green, but we can also now take a look at the speaker view, which is a newer aspect of a recent update of ours. So you can see both microphone pickup as well as speaker coverage. Exactly. Um, and this is more for a rule of thumb in terms of, uh, am I good in terms of sound? And, and uh, you certainly are for with three here. Um, but just to show you, again, there are different combinations, and then we'll switch back over, uh, is, you know, maybe you have a ceiling on wide beam in the back of the room, uh, kind of going with fewer devices here. Again, if we switch to the speaker coverage, you'll notice the ceiling doesn't have any. Um, maybe you just add in a couple speakers at the uh at the back of the room, ceiling mounted. Uh, or, with something we haven't mentioned, you can tie in existing uh, third-party speakers that may already be there. Um, so, just wanted to show off that tool. It is, again, super uh, useful uh, for you, as you have many, many different types of rooms. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and go back to the PowerPoint, if we can. You may have to be the one to change the presenter back. Uh, certainly. All right. Let's go ahead and get that PowerPoint back. All right, here it goes. 
Sorry right, about that. Are we seeing? Hold on. Not yet. Oh, sorry. Just one more second. There we go. Thank you so much. Again, um, yeah, so now we're going to cover stories from the field. Um, let's take a look. Yeah, and the first thing we're going to talk about, so this is was a scenario of a series of community colleges uh, from Indiana um, that ultimately did over 600 rooms utilizing STEM wall. And there was a few things that were very, 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 Kind of powerful for them in terms of, of choosing the STEM ecosystem. One was that ability to kind of scale across these 600 rooms where it was for the smaller classrooms, one device, for the medium classrooms, two devices, and for the larger classrooms, three devices. Um, but there was also this ability to, the way he set it up on his network is, because we do have our STEM control, but we also do have applications that can be downloaded onto an iPad or a regular Android tablet. And he had it situated to where from his one single pane of glass uh, from his iPad, he was able to see across all campuses, every single room, Everything was able to manage everything from this one one single iPad, and it was incredible for him uh, individually for one of the big reasons why he chose STEM. So that was just a, a really, really great win for, for everyone involved. Yep. And we'll go into more detail, too, on what that management looks like. Yes. But, um, let's take a look at this, uh, a closer look at this community college example. Uh, because it may resonate with uh, most or all of you. Um, even though this is specific to a certain uh, organization, it's also very uh, familiar, I'm sure you'll see. So limited budget, limited technical staff. Um, these are just aspects of being at a kind of smaller institutional level. Um, no specific AP person may be dedicated on staff. So uh, often this falls directly onto IT to manage um, over time and, and even to uh, source solution stuff and for. So, that's a, a common one. Um, no specialized training is needed um, or integrator. So a lot of solutions out there may need, uh, you know, third parties to come on site and, and have to uh, not only configure but install and deploy themselves. Um, you know, with, with the STEM system, it is as DIY as it gets and as IT friendly as it gets for audio. And then, um, yeah, again, back to that management thing. Uh, uh, you know, you have the ability to see all your classrooms across the organization. Um, as well as getting ping notifications, push notifications rather, um, if, if there's an issue with a single device, knowing exactly which classroom it's in and which microphone is wrong um, is super useful, especially as I mentioned earlier that the end users in the room may not be as tech savvy. Uh, you may be all the way across campus. You know, time is, is, is money here. <laughs> so um, having, that, uh, having that ability to proactively um, address an issue has, has, has been Wonderful. And we're just driving this this point home that you know really push notifications for our education customers have been incredible um, in terms of it's just you know this is this is AV this is IT um, we are all familiar I mean it says there Murphy's law but we're all familiar with this it's not a matter of 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 when or if some it's not a matter of if something will happen it's like when it will happen and, and and how is it reacted to and responded to um, and so this just allows you know our users to know if there's something wrong be able to diagnose that problem remotely and be able to understand and know what is happening you know prior to getting that dreaded phone call of uh, hey class started you know five minutes ago and nothing's working yeah, and then another point too, you can kind of see call logs, usage log. Uh, maybe you find uh, after tracking several different rooms that one isn't being as heavily used as you thought. Uh, maybe there's uh, an extra device in there that can go in a more heavily used room, right? Mm -hmm. So having that tracking as well in this management system is uh, very useful for, um, you know, repurposing, I guess. Uh, so. And something that is a kind of some new, probably news to, to most of you out there is one of our more recent updates. Um, we now have an API. 
Um, and the biggest part of this, which will be super, super beneficial to all of you out there, is the API uh, definitely more from that management, this aspect of now, you know, the whole thing is trying to see everything from a single pane of glass. Like we want to have, you know, sometimes it says many schools are using one of three main management systems. And pretty much now, every device that you are managing overall, we can now take this API and you can include the STEM systems within that. So you can see that within that one pane of glass and really be able to just manage um, everything uh, from where you are, are working from rather than having to switch around to see what's what. So it's just it's something that's really cool, exciting, um, and it's one of our newer updates in the last few months. It's all about convenience. Yeah. yeah. And then in terms of, okay, let's say you have a project or you have questions after the call, uh, who would you work with either to source or to plan or to get input? Um, and that's always going to be customer happiness initially. Um, that's our team here at Shure. Uh, who's dedicated to working with you at the end user. Um, you know, if you have questions, again, they can direct you in the right, you know, place, or if you're ready for a quote, anything like that, um, they will be uh, able to assist and, and kind of be your liaison here at Shure. Yeah. yeah, and in terms of, you know, um, where you can source this from, anywhere that you normally source product from, whether that be an integrator that you work with, retail providers, online resellers, or directly through Shure. Again, back to convenience. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And then, of course, we do have uh, tons of resources on our website, one of which is a free guide. It's a comprehensive breakdown. Uh, it's stuff we've gone into a little bit here, but this is even further into detail um, on cost savings and, and uh, guides in general to integration for all these classrooms. There's a free copy you can get on the website. So please do. And then something we're doing, which is really exciting here at Shure, is for every STEM ecosystem device sold by Shure, a donation will be made to various STEM, you know, science, technology, engineering, and math-based organizations and education. So uh, something very exciting we've announced and uh, looking forward to seeing the success of that. Yes, I'll just say STEM is super important here at Shure, um, and so we're really happy to be able to offer this program. All right, and so with that, I think it's time to jump into questions, and I yes. don't see any just yet. Um, so please, if you have a question, get those typed in right now. And while you're thinking of those questions and typing them in, I just wanted to let you know that we have some great resources if you do have questions here at Sure, not just about this topic, but about all sorts of audio topics. And um, to ask those questions, you can go to sure.com slash contact. You can fill out a form there to be connected with our both our happiness teams and our support teams here. And as I said, they can answer so many questions across so many audio topics. So please feel free, sure.com slash contact for all of your audio question needs. Um, and I'm still not seeing any questions. Uh, Ryan, Justin, do you have any sort of questions that you usually get um, that your, your happiness team gets or anything that you normally get from the field you can speak to? Um, a lot of the times it's, you know, do we work with this? Do we work with that? Um, and the answer is almost always yes. Yeah. And whether it's the software platform itself, we're agnostic. Yeah. Uh, whether it's a certain whiteboard or a computer, um, the answer is typically yes. But if you have anything more specific, we can always address. But we just know there's lots and lots of different options out there to tie into your room and there's lots of essentials and we want to make it as easy and play friendly with others as possible. So. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. And, and just uh, something to do to take note of is, is we did mention this, but it's great to mention again that there is an aspect of within our hub, there is a, you know, five pin connector that allows you to connect, you know, external um, audio to it. So if you have a room that already has, you know, speakers and an amplifier, you can easily just reuse that. Like you do not have to, to purchase our speakers. Um, but if you are renewing a whole system, you know, that idea of just having all these devices that are networked and work together um, for ease of use that way too. Um, and we do get that a lot, like, oh, can it work with this speaker system? Yeah, absolutely. That's fantastic. All right. Uh, we do have some questions now that have come in. First one, it's a very good question. Uh, what is the setup that you gentlemen are using in the room right now for this webinar? Yeah, so this is our 20 by 30 foot space and, and we are in front of more or less our wall units. 
Um, but we also have active here a couple ceilings um, and a table unit, which is a little overkill for a space like this, to be honest. But, you know, since we do have some time, we might as well just do a little walk around here where I'm walking around this space, you know, being picked up by the most effective signal, regardless of where I am in this room. Um, I could even do things like turn around um, and it is going to sound, uh, you know, pretty much the exact same, regardless of where you are in the space. And so that is an idea of, and something too to take note of is the way that our our kind of the DSP works, especially with the wall unit, is you do not need to be facing the wall unit in order to be picked up by it. You can't have your back turned as if you are an educator, and, and it's just that has been tested over and over and over and over and over again in the field, and it's just worked out fantastically. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Uh, we've got another great question that came in. Um, is it likely for an instructor with limited knowledge of IT and Ethernet to be able to design and install a system in a medium-sized classrooms? And what resources are available to help me walk through the process? Yeah, I mean, whether you're the end user or um, specifically in charge of IT, um, I mean, if I can do it, I think any instructor can, right? Yeah. So uh, that room design tool on our website is as easy as pie, and you can literally type in the dimensions of the classroom you're in, uh, drag and drop any furniture you'd like, although that's optional. It's just to give you kind of a, a personalized look at the, uh, the room you're you know, dealing with. And then to drag and drop the, the most important part, which is our devices. Uh, which again, you saw from our demo there, is not just the audio coverage, but the speaker coverage as well. So as long as that's saturated, um, you know, you can play around things like with budget and uh, adding devices, different types of devices to the space. Um, that is about as easy as it can get with audio in general, right? There's no walkthrough that's needed. <laughs> There's no third party that needs to come on site necessarily. Uh, we make it as easy as that. And then, you know, for IT especially, who may not be audio experts, um, to you know, have the tools. Uh, and I also think there's the aspect of this too, from actually installing it. Um, obviously, you know, the wall unit and the table unit are far easier to install than a ceiling unit would be because you'd actually have to have the knowledge of being able to take down the two by two square, you know, use a gripple kit to put on, you know, the beams above that, all of that. So there might be some need of help from facilities. But in terms of after actually everything is connected, you, anyone, and again, like we are, we're sales guys, you know, we're not super, super technical ourselves and we can do this, but there's also, you know, a secret weapon that we have is that customer happiness team and legitimately calling somebody and saying, Hey, I have just installed this stuff. I'm trying to connect it. I'm running into some issues. You're going to get a human on the line uh, um, pretty much immediately, and you'll be able to have someone walk you through step by step in the moment, be able to connect. Oh, shoot, we need to do a video conferencing call. Pull up your phone. I'm going to send you uh, an invite, and you're going to show me what's happening, and we're going to walk you through that. And so, you can pretty much know almost nothing um, and ultimately have this room, you know, get, get a room set up. So that is yep. super impressive. I love that. All right. Um, and then it looks like we just don't have any more questions, but one comment um, when you did the walk around, uh, I've got a comment, effective area coverage of the wall unit. So bravo. <laughs> All right. I think that just about wraps up our questions for the day. We want to thank you so much for joining us. Hope you learned a little something. I know I always do. And we hope to see you on the next webinar. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye, everybody.